Are you wondering why you can't hear God's voice? Are you feeling as if you've lost your compass or your true north? Like you don't know where you are, where you're supposed to go, what you're supposed to be doing, or why you're even here in the first place? Keep watching then, because this video may be able to help. So it's a little late, but Happy New Year! If you woke up this morning, then God must still have a purpose for your life. If you made it to 2024, then there's something the Lord needs you to do this year. If you have no idea what that is and you need to hear from God your Creator, fasting is a great way to cut out all the noise and get some clarity and direction. And that's where this year's fast and dopamine detox come in. So let's break down what's in this video. First, I want to give a brief summary of what these things actually are. Then I want to explain how I did the fast this year and the plan that I followed throughout the journey. After that, a lot of people have asked for specific recipes for the fast, so I will give you some insight into what I actually ate and how I cooked the meals. Then I want to share some crazy testimonies of what the Lord did in the middle of the detoxing process. And last, I want to share what God revealed to me during the fast. So if you're subscribed, you know I've been doing the Daniel's fast at the beginning of January for the past four years. And last year, I added the dopamine detox to the mix. So the first question to answer is, what are they? The Daniel's fast is based out of the book of Daniel in the Bible. It can span for 10 days or 21 days and consists of mostly fruits and vegetables. The dopamine detox is kind of like a cleanse from modern pleasures. You cut out all the unhealthy things that trigger dopamine responses. Social media, video games, sugar, television, music, etc. Or from a spiritual perspective, anything that distracts you. Now I did the 21 day fast. So next question is, what meal plan and restrictions did I follow during this fast? Before I go on, let me just say that there is no right way to do a fast. There's not a formula, but this is what I personally did for 2024. Right off the bat, I started the dopamine detox on day one. No TV, no social media, no web browsing, no music, no video games, no news media, and tried to stay off the internet and digital world as much as possible. I did allow 30 minutes of emergency internet access each day to answer messages, emails, etc. I followed these restrictions as best I could for all 21 days. It was hard, but I was able to do it with God. As for the meal, a lot of times if I go straight into fasting without warning, my body has a meltdown and it can get pretty dangerous. So I slowly increased the restrictions of food options over the course of a three week period. But for the entire 21 days, the consistent rule was no meat, no dairy, no artificial sugar, no bread, no alcohol, no caffeine, etc. What was I actually able to eat? For the first 10 days, I was allowed to consume vegetables, water, seasoning, oils, non-dairy milk, nuts, fruits, rice, and juices. For the following seven days, my options were restricted to just vegetables, water, seasoning, and oils. And for the last five days, I was allowed to eat only vegetables and water. If you are able to take it to the next level and take out food altogether, go for it. I personally didn't do that this time, but I've heard amazing stories from people who have done dry fasting and water fast for extended periods of time. Now, what are some recipes and meals you can cook up with these limited options? Well, obviously you can get creative and cook some better things than I did, but here's what I ended up making with these food options. The first 10 days, I ate a lot of herb rice. You can get this from the rice section in most grocery stores. Chew cups of water with the contents of the package. Boil, then simmer them for about 15 minutes, and then it's ready to eat after it cools. I got a container of salted mixed nuts that lasted almost the whole three week period. You can also get some vegetable chips and some bean based hummus. Obviously fruits are great, you can make smoothies or salads with them. 
I ate a lot of pineapple, bananas, and raspberries. There's vegan chili recipes, vegetable soup recipes, miso soup is great. If you have an instant pot, you can throw in some collard greens, a can of diced tomatoes, one cup of water, and a spoonful of minced garlic. Mix it around and let it cook pressurized for about 10 minutes and it's done. Super quick and easy. For drinking, I drank some almond milk, but mostly stuck with water the whole time. Getting into the next seven days, our food options become more restricted, but there's still a lot of things you can do. Pan fried vegetables are basically what I stuck to every night for supper. Add a little olive oil to a saucepan, bring it to medium heat, toss in some vegetables of your choice, add some minced garlic, salt, and some dash garlic herb seasoning blend. Mix it around, let it cook covered, occasionally mixing until it's golden brown, and then it's ready. I did this with sliced potatoes, green beets, and broccoli, but you can do this with so much more. On the final five days, I was limited to just vegetables and water. You can definitely bake things like potatoes, carrots, corn, etc. But honestly, I had pretty much the same thing for every meal. Boiled corn and green beans. Was it good? No, not really. And that's the point. If you've seen my first fasting video, I basically explain how fasting is about putting the body in its place, depriving it of pleasure so you can focus on God. So obviously you don't want to be gratifying the flesh with the same things you would eat any other day, just with different ingredients. Otherwise, that defeats the purpose of the fast. You want to gradually cut things out until there is no more carnal distractions or compromises. So what does one do with all that spare time not eating and scrolling through social media? Well, this is a fast and fasting without prayer is just a diet. So be in prayer. If you don't know what to pray, pick a nation and pick a person to pray for every day. It doesn't have to be super religious where you lock yourself in the closet for an hour. Just pray for them continuously throughout the day or whatever God puts on your heart. Stay in the word, read the Bible, and if you don't know what to read, I read Corinthians during the fast and there is a lot of good stuff in there. Meditate on the word until the revelations of heaven transform your mind. And between prayer and reading the Bible, there's also a lot of practical things you can do. You can clean and organize, go through your attic or basement, and get rid of all the junk taking up space in your house. The fast is a spiritual cleanse, but you can reflect that in the natural as well. Renovate, landscape, build, paint and draw, read Christian books, journal, write, work out, do exercise, you can volunteer, reach out to people you normally don't and offer to spend the day with them, helping them with whatever they need. Personally, I did a lot of renovating, but another thing I did was sit down with a pen and paper and intentionally make plans not just for the rest of the year, but for the rest of the decade and ask questions like, okay God, you put me here for a reason. I'm still here on this earth, so obviously you have a purpose for my life. So what's the plan? Where do I go from here? What do you want me to do this year? And long term, where do you want me to be by the end of this decade? If you need clarity like I did, make some time to strategize. Don't just float through life aimlessly. God changes our plans, but if we don't make plans for him to change, then we're not going to get anywhere. Think of it like this. You are the arrow and God is the wind. When the arrow is shot, the wind alters its trajectory. But the wind can't fine tune the path of the arrow if the arrow stays in the bow. Don't take this the wrong way, but we're not waiting on God. God is waiting on us. You don't have to know exactly where you're going or where you'll end up. You don't have to have it all figured out. Just start moving by faith and he will give you direction as you gain momentum. Another good example for this is the concept of hydraulic steering. A hydraulic steering wheel is not able to turn the tires unless the engine is running and your foot is on the gas. So spiritually speaking, you've got to put your foot on the gas so that Jesus can take the wheel. Now for an exciting part, what testimony do I have from my experience doing the fast this year? 
Aside from just having a sense of clarity and more motivation to get things done, one wild blessing happened in the middle of week two that blew my mind. Now I've heard stories from people who see financial breakthrough when they fast, and I've personally seen that when I do the fast as well, but never quite like I did this time. So it's the second week and I suddenly get an email from a media licensing company I collaborated with several years ago. I look at the email and it says that I have money waiting to be claimed in my account. So I think, huh, that's strange. But hey, maybe there's $50 or so in there that I can make use of. When I get home, I log into this account that I completely forgot about until I received this email and find out that apparently one of my old TikTok videos had struck a licensing deal with a brand name company and there was over $2,600 in my account waiting to be claimed. I was taken back for a moment and thought, is this real? And it's amazing because I didn't go into this fast with the attention of financial breakthrough. I went into it seeking to shut out all distractions and hear clearly from God, to clean out the laundry that had piled up and recalibrate to God's will. But when you walk in God's will, you will see breakthrough in every dimension of your life. Miraculous blessings in the natural become a side effect of humbly posturing your heart before God in the spirit. Seek first the kingdom and all the less important things will be added to you abundantly. And obviously, as you just heard, I can attest to that. Now, if you are in a place where you don't know how to hear God's voice, no matter how hard you try, this is what I learned during this year's fasting journey. Imagine there is this still small voice speaking. It's always there and it's always available, but because it's quiet, you have to turn off anything else that's making noise in order to hear it clearly. Now ask yourself, what's making the most noise in your life? Is it the TV on your wall? the music in your ear, the phone in your hand? Is it a career that's stealing away your time and attention? A toxic circle of friends that don't actually care about you like you think they do? What's taking up space in your mind? Imagine you invite a friend to your house to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, but when they come in, they see you've invited a bunch of other people into your house also. When they try to talk to you, the voices and conversations of all the other people you invited drown out the voice of the one friend. Hopefully you're getting the idea. We can't overload ourselves with distractions. We can spend hours a day seeking God, but doesn't it all go out the window if we're also spending hours a day seeking the pleasures of the world? Truly, where is your heart then? Is it in two places at once? If you really want to hear from God, you've got to get rid of all the other noises, all the distractions, all the addictions. Shut every door that doesn't come from God and don't invite any other voices into your house. Turn it all off, put it to silence, and then listen. The voices of lies and confusion are loud and complicated, but the voice of truth is quiet and simple. Do the fast and do the detox. If you don't know what else to do, follow the steps of the plan in this video and see what happens. See what God says and watch where he takes you. I pray that God unleashes vision and strategy for you this year, supernatural blessings and breakthrough as you remove all the distractions hindering your relationship with the Lord and realign yourself to His will and purpose for your life and for His kingdom. I hope you know that the future is bright and the best is yet to come and that heaven is eagerly anticipating the moment you surrender everything to him and realize how precious and valuable you are in God's eyes so that you may step into the destiny that he has waiting for you. Share this video with someone you think needs to hear this message and make sure to subscribe to the channel if you wanna keep up with next year's fasting video. Have a great day, my friend, and have a blessed life.